Have you ever crossed the line? Do you know the difference between right and wrong? Good from bad, great versus evil. What line would you cross? What lengths would you go to? If Qatar Airways no longer existed, if it left one world so you couldn't get cheap tier points anymore, would it push you to the brink of insanity? If you were threatened with losing your One World Emerald status because Qatar Airways no longer liked you, you'd have to fly American Airlines. Or would it be easier to simply turn to a life of crime? Does Qatar Airways simply exist so that low earners can get a BA gold card every year? Reputedly one of the finest airlines in the world, but with often minimum wage pricing, what would you do to fly Qatar Airways? Well, good morning ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to a very unusual video. This has taken three years of planning, three aborted attempts through various issues that the world is very aware of. However, today is finally the day, finally, after three years of waiting, I'm going to try the world's five-star airline, Qatar Airways in business class. I've traveled here to Oslo in Norway this morning to catch the flight to Doha on a 787-9, and then from there, I'll then travel on a similar aircraft over to Dubai on a short one hour hop. Now, why have I traveled all the way north to a place like Oslo? I mean, Norway is a fabulous country, of course, but why have I traveled all this distance to get a flight that I could have hopped on in London? In fact, I could have got on board an Airbus A380 in London with Qatar Airways. So why am I flying here to travel on a smaller aircraft? Well, all will be revealed and there are several reasons for that. So welcome to Oslo in Norway where I start today's journey. Let's check in and head to the lounge. The lounge here isn't owned by Qatar Airways which is the first clue why this route is a relatively cheap way to try out the reputed service of the self-declared world's five-star airline. The truth is that Qatar Airways along with other Middle Eastern carriers are under tremendous competitive pressure on what are fairly thin margin routes from places like Oslo and Stockholm. So don't think how much I paid is a one-off. Deals on this route can be had. Qatar Airways pays for access at the generic OSL lounge. There are several here at OSL, but the best one to head to is at gate E in the international departures area, as Qatar Airways pays extra for premium passengers to access an inclusive enclave in the lounge where you can get bubbles. After a few hours in this fairly basic lounge, excitement is building, even arousing, as I head to the gate. Our aircraft today is just two years old, and I'm sat in seat 2A. At the start of the video, I mentioned there were a few reasons for starting in Oslo and not in London. One of which is that Qatar Airways has, by my reckoning at least, six business class seat types, so you do need to pick carefully. Some people prefer the open nature of the more traditional business seat found on the Airbus 380, but for me, I like the sliding door. I'm sociable like that. First, you'll want to decide what you want to eat and drink from Qatar's extensive menus. There's more on the food and drinks later, much more in fact. We're soon airborne and enjoying the mood lighting on this fairly new 787-9 and looking forward to what should be a really good flight. Whilst we're looking around the cabin, there's just time to tell you about my awesome Patreon supporters. It's people like Kieran, James, Joe, and every one of my supporters who help me bring these videos to life. And this month, we welcome our latest member, Pietro Tagliabu. Pietro is a fellow aviation enthusiast who has been a great supporter of the channel over the years. So welcome, Pietro. Let's take a look at the in-flight entertainment system. It's fast, with lots of choice, including these external cameras. Soon enough, the service starts with my first glass of bubbles and warm nuts. So let's discuss warm nuts. Well, hello everybody from Qatar Airways, Boeing 787-9, en route from Oslo to Doha. About a six hour, 10 minute flight, the captain said this afternoon. I had intended this morning when I set out to do just voiceovers on this video but 
I have to say, service has been so good so far, and we haven't even made it to dinner service yet. So, so far the crew have been excellent, and we're only about half an hour or three quarters of an hour into the flight, and there's some real highlights I wanted to share with you. Things that I hadn't been able to capture when I was researching for this video. So one of them is, quite simply, this charging pad for my iPhone. Now it's not connected at the moment, but you just pop your iPhone in, and it starts charging. Now, there's nothing clever about that because wireless chargers have been around for years now, but on an aircraft, it's actually really convenient because if, if you think about all the downtime you've got, you can just pop it in there and it's charged by the time you get to your destination. And the other question of course is, naturally, how do you like your nuts? Do you like them cold or warm? Because you've got a choice. So when the flight attendant came to me and said, would you like some nuts with your champagne? I said, well, sure, why not? And he said, do you want them cold or warm? And I've never ever been asked that before on a flight. And it's the nice little touches. And the other thing is that we've obviously got this door here for extra privacy, which is not that high. You can see my head. I'm about six foot tall. You can see my head above it. But the interesting thing is that when he's bringing you warm nuts, they actually open the door every time they bring a drink or nuts. They actually open the door rather than just if it was me, I'd just hand them over the top of the door here. But they don't. It's just the little things like that. So, so far, so good. And like I say, just waiting for dinner. The other thing, just while I'm nibbling on my nuts, do you like nibbling on nuts? As I do, I'm guessing you probably do, is I bought the Wi-Fi, which is really fast on here, for just 10 US dollars for the entire flight. I can't remember what it is on British Airways for long haul. I'll find out and I'll pop it in the comments. But to be honest, it's more than ten dollars. I'm absolutely certain it's more than ten dollars for the whole flight and it's super fast. That might have something to do with the fact that this aircraft is only two years old, of course, but I just can't fault it so far. It is so very impressive. And we haven't even eaten yet. So if you like nibbling on nuts in the same way that I do, let me know in the comments below. I know that one or two of my Patreon supporters really do like nibbling on nuts as well. Then the great food service commenced. For the purpose of the video today, I tried out eight courses, which began with this amuse-bouge, bread with a choice of dressing, then prawns, then a bowl of soup, then seared tuna, a main of chicken curry, followed by a beef dish, and for dessert, the cheese board, followed by ice cream, all washed down with more bubbles. It was, in short, the best flight food that I have ever had. And then I decided to open up the business class amenity kit supplied by Diptyque. Rather than just talk about it, let's actually try it. Uh, so the uh, guidance notes, according to Google, would say, Today, eau de toilette is used as a generic reference to stronger perfumes for both men and women. Typically, you would place eau de toilette fragrance on your pulse points, and it should last much longer, up to eight hours in some cases so you don't have to continuously reapply. Do you think we should go for it? I don't know. Do men wear eau de toilettes? I don't want to waste it, it's free. So... It turns on you to specify the strength of the fragrance. Ah. Well, let's give it a go, right? It's the worst that can happen. Do I look like somebody who wears eau de toilette? I just smells so nice now. Makes a change, that's a pulse point, right? I have no idea what I'm doing with this sort of stuff. I've probably got it all wrong. But hey, I smell nice. It's not a bad scent, actually. Not bad, it's like burning rubber. Mm. And now time, of course, for another drink. This time I'm trying out Qatar's version of the Aperol Spritz, and it was served within three minutes of ordering. Of course, on the 787, you can dim the window. Some love it, some don't, because the crew can override your preferred setting. But of course, inevitably, food and drink goes in one way and has to come out somewhere else. So, with all that food and drink working its way through the system, 
let's go check out the Qatar 789 toilet, but not before passing even more snacks. Yep, in case you get hungry, between the 9 or 10 courses of food you could get on this 6 hour flight, there are some small snacks here that you can help yourself to all the way throughout the flight. So, I'm fed, I'm watered, and moved out. It's time for a little break. Pop the seat back and let's see how we get on. And so after a couple of hours sleep, I'm not somebody who ever particularly sleeps very well on aircraft, it's time yet for another drink, a large whiskey and another movie. Watching the sunset five miles above the earth, somewhere over the Black Sea, I reflect on what has been a hectic and at times mind-sapping 12 months. This is why I love flying. There are no people to disturb me here, nobody asking for endless PowerPoint presentations or using me to better their own profile. It's just me in total privacy. A rare privilege for me these days. And the true views, well the views, come free. So I said earlier, I'd tell you how much I paid for this fare, and it was, in my view, a really good deal. As an American Express Platinum card holder, I get access to the Amex International Airlines program, of which Qatar Airways is a member. Booking through the program can lead to some very good and some not so good deals, but for this round trip to Dubai via Doha, I paid just £900, including taxes. But speaking of low fares, all Qatar Airways business class fares are not the same, and it's really important I tell you this. When I next book with Qatar Airways in business class, and I'd suggest you do the same thing, go for the next highest fare category. It's not much more money, it gives you lounge access and crucially gives you the full Avios mileage. But let's just recap. You've got a Qatar Airways business class ticket in your hand without any one world status at their main hub in Doha and you've got no lounge access. Just let that sink in for a moment. There is a caveat here, of course, and that is that if you do have one world status, as I do, then you will be directed to one of their, what I would say is a lesser lounge, but actually really nice. The one they sent me to was the Platinum Lounge further down the terminal. It had showers, it was very clean, the food was okay, and it was fine for two hours. So would I fly Qatar Airways again? Well, yes, without hesitation. It was excellent in all aspects other than the lounge access, that P-code fare, which I will be aware of next time. You will hear people say, yes, but Qatar Airways is state funded. It treats its people not so well. But let me be really clear here. I'm not here to talk politics or deliver paid reviews. This was entirely self-funded and I'm not a politician. This is my review of Qatar Airways in business class on their 787-9.